guys welcome to my youtube channel thank you so much for clicking on this video um if this is your first time here please don't forget to like subscribe and turn on your post notifications and also welcome 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 if you are a returning subscriber i really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart i cannot emphasize how important you guys are to me and i appreciate all the positive feedback i appreciate all the messages and the dms that you guys send me and you know even screenshots and pictures of you actually watching my content okay i really appreciate it please continue to share to sub um to like you know the works yeah okay so i am currently um i'm i'm away from home at the moment i am studying i'm writing um the biggest exams of my entire profession i am I'm currently studying and um yeah so i put the phone in an awkward position because i don't even have a tripod with me or a stand or anything here where i am okay so you just have to bear with me so um today um it's not more it's not like a story time like usually or the challenges and the jokes and you know like how usually it would be one of the challenges or the jokes or whatever so today i just kind of like want to share a a little bit of a story but like not in depth because it's kind of like coming from a deep place and it's like something that's been placed in my heart you know to actually just talk about because i feel so strongly about it and because i'm currently in a situation in my life where i'm like just really just going through the ultimate most okay and most of it okay well 99 percent of my problems are all like emanating from the fact that i have a lot of academic stress and a lot of anxiety and like my mental health has just not been top tier um, in terms of you know how I'm coping with like my, my stress and the books and and my job and just everything that's going on around at the moment okay so um, by the grace of God I am here where I am now and I guess this is the finish line and I'm kind of just really excited at the same time I'm nervous because you know the future is so uncertain and I mean for those of you that do know that I am in the legal profession those of you that don't know I guess like now is the time when you find out so um, there's a lot of uh, misconceptions that come with um, studying law and how people think that the profession goes and like nobody really talks or I haven't really come across people that talk much about the struggles that come with actually um, taking law as a degree and how it affects you and it affects the quality of your life you know from the process of actually getting your degree to the process of actually becoming admitted okay so in the beginning i always thought yes okay great i want to be a lawyer but i wasn't really sure if i could do it or not i wasn't really sure if i could even finish the degree you know it was just always something that was zobona pambi type of thing right and yeah i managed to do my law degree i did um i did graduate um i did the four years it is a four-year degree i did it i passed i graduated and life went on but nobody could have ever prepared me for um the struggles that come with after getting your law degree because we all assumed i guess to some extent that from watching suits and how to get away with murder and all of that that as soon as you get your law degree then it's smooth sailing from there and you're a lawyer and it's all amazing and it's really just not about that but i don't really want to focus too much on the law aspect of that like i would rather do a separate video talking about law and the process of becoming a lawyer and 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 the ins and outs and i opted to become an advocate so the process of having to go through pupillage the financial repercussions of it the struggles you know that's like that's something that i would do on a separate video but uh, more than anything in in that process that i went through and, and in the struggles that i went through there um, i mean i was struggling financially especially financially because um you, you know the books are so expensive everything is just so expensive you need resources you need you need to have like um a lot of financial support in order for you to do um especially with pupillage okay so i didn't even last with articles because i was just like nope this is not for me and i left the law firm at which i was at and i got a better opportunity with the council that i will not mention because at the moment i'm not very happy with them um but i got a better opportunity or a better opportunity and um so 
I didn't know that that was going to create so many problems for me. Like it got me into a lot of shit in terms of I had to run through my savings. I had to spend a lot of my money. I had to buy textbooks. I had to support myself. I had to do this, that and the other. And as much as my family, particularly my mom, because my mom is a single mom, particularly her, she's done everything that she can. I mean, I was a cash paying student in varsity and she's done everything that she can. And she's paid for everything till now. Like she still got my back like that. But there comes a certain point in your life. Well, personally, me, there came a certain point in my life where I was like, I kind of just want to ease the burden on my mom and kind of like take up on things for myself and kind of like figure this shit out by myself, you know, because she's done the best that she can. She, 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 she could. And I feel like she doesn't need to like have to sponsor me for the rest of her life, even though, I mean, I'm only just beginning my profession like now. So yeah, what I really wanted to um, talk about more than anything else was how, um, you know, it was it, it was mostly about friendship because this conversation spot was sparked by a conversation that I was having with one of my other friends. One of my really close friends, um, her name is Vera, she's a great friend. Shout out to you, sis. Um, she and I were having a conversation and we were just generally talking about how, okay, we're always talking about how I've got too many friends, according to her and everybody else. It's particularly my family. So, um, you know, it, it, it's just always something that I've always struggled with a little bit, um, you know, in terms of creating boundaries for myself. And it's it's, 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 it's really one of my most toxic traits. Um, my, 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 the, the level at which I'm understanding is a danger to me. It's detrimental to myself. And it's something that I've been working in for a very long time. And I can really gladly and like gracefully say that I'm at a very different place now mentally and that I have learned so many lessons and I've had a lot of rude awakenings in terms of um, friendship and what it actually means and what it actually entails and what it actually means for you as an individual, what you should allow, what you shouldn't allow, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, right? And one of the most important things that i would learned is that I actually lacked boundaries a lot. Hence, I found myself in a situation where I was constantly being disappointed by friends. And also this goes, you know, um, with the problems that I encountered, particularly with my studies and uh, this entire profession has just been so depressing for me. Um, I think that's when I actually learned a lot more of who my friends are, who's who's my actual friend, and who are just people that are just in my life for vibes. Because we tend to um, assume that everybody's got the same intentions with as you, and we tend to assume that everybody um, wants the best for you, and we tend to assume just because you want the best for other people, you think that those people feel the same way about you. Okay. And unfortunately, that's not really true. It's not true at all, in fact. There are a few people that will be for you and there will be a few people that will be there for you in your life for as long as they can benefit from you and for as long as there is something that they will gain from having you around in their lives. I'm not in the business of bad-mouthing people. I'm not in the business of getting onto YouTube or any social media whatsoever and dragging people's names or any like, anything like that in the mud. But... I have had a couple of rude awakenings myself in terms of like my friendships where I thought that people felt a certain way about me when they actually didn't. Sometimes people are in your life and they want to see you win as long as you're not beating them. Okay. And that's just something, um, that's just something that it is like people want to see you doing good as long as you're not doing better than them. There are people that are like that and you have to accept that. But I've also had a great amount of, um, love and compassion and friendship and good intentions and pure-hearted people that have come into my life and they've stayed right and i can really just gladly say that most of my friends like my day ones from day one like my childhood friends or high school friends and like my close friends the ones i actually consider family are actually genuinely good friends um but i did also learn that i had a lot of other people that i genuinely thought were like my really really good friends that were not really necessarily in my life for anything other than vibes good times and and i'm not mad at anybody i'm just saying um that i think that it's very important for us to all just like learn how to categorize people and place them in the positions that they need to be in order for us to also know our positions in their lives okay so there is like one thing that i learned and like i learned this um, I think two years back, although it actually started to make a lot of sense for me, like recently, especially since COVID, because that's when a lot of people started going through things. I think we can all agree that COVID impacted everybody negatively. 
and others are doing better than others whereas others were just crumbling under whatever pressure was applied by COVID. okay other people lost their jobs other people were um, retrenched other people um their cut their salaries were cut down other people can't find jobs there's unemployment there's so many things that are happening in each and every single one of our lives and so that's also very important um, to understand that everybody's going through something in order for you not to expect too much from other people and for you not to have unrealistic expectations in terms of how much people can be there for you, right? Okay, so with that being said, I went through the worst kind of help because of um, the fact that I needed to secure my articles after getting my degree, which was in 2019. And then there was 2020 and 2020 was the year in which COVID um, struck us. Okay, so in 2020, I was working for a law firm. My late boss has now passed away. He passed away last year because of COVID. And may he saw rest in peace. And that was also like kind of life altering for me because then now, um, without my boss being there, that automatically rendered me unemployed again. Okay, so securing articles is also just a mission on its own. And it's really, really difficult because the requirements are a bit crazy. Like they need you to have a car, to have a driver's license. You need to have this, that, and the other, this, that, and the other. Some things that a lot of people don't have, particularly the less um, privileged people. Um, you know, I've been in varsity with law students that would eat rice and tomato sauce for dinner. And I'm just like, how do you eat that? Do you know what I mean? But that's because those people are really struggling and that's legit what they can eat in order for them to like not sleep on an empty stomach. So people's problems are really not the same. Okay. So with that being said, my friends were also going through things. I was also going through things and there's never been a point in my life where I've expected um, stuff from people. Um, I'm not a person that is entitled to other people's belongings or other people's things, but I am a person that overcompensates sometimes and I go the extra mile for other people. And I think I may have um, crossed my own boundary in the sense that because I do so much for other people, I then expect to a certain extent, deep down in my heart of hearts, I expect to a certain extent that people are going to move the same way for me. So for instance, in a situation where a friend needed financial assistance and I could help them, I would do the most and give them money and, you know, just help them out and this, that and the other. I am not the type of person to come and nag you and say, yeah, you owe me 50 rand, please give me back my money. That I'm not the type of person. If I give you 50 rand and you say you're going to give it to me next week, if you don't give it to me next week, I will notice that you didn't give it to me, but I'm not the type of person that's going to chase after you and be like, yeah, until I 50 rand wham. <clears throat> Excuse me. Something weird happening in my nose. And um, sorry about that. And because I expect that people should have integrity when they do such things you know i understand though that things do come up as long as you communicate with me and you say with, to me okay listen dude i haven't managed to get the 50 rand back that's that that way i will not be able to pay you back right now i'm a very understanding person that's just generally the type of person that i am okay but this is not even about me and what i've done for other people it's just about how um it kind of took me like it i had a rude awakening in the sense that um when i was talking to vera vera was like you'd be surprised because there's just so many people around you all the time and there was a situation where i needed assistance right and i needed help and it was like a matter of life and death like it was urgent and my whole life depends on my career at this point in my time i need to make sure that i succeed in my career in order for me to actually have the future that i've planned for myself otherwise the last seven years of my life will have all been in vain okay because I've been working towards my profession since 2015 and now it's 2022 and I'm at a place in my life where I'm glad that things are working out but at the same time I feel like I'm not where I should be and it's put a lot of things on hold for me including not being able to run my business effectively and efficiently especially because also the council did not allow us to also just like run businesses on the side with the contract that I had the whole of 2021. And then there was issues of them not paying us on time for months on end. And they still haven't paid us for months on end, which also got me into like sticky situations in terms of like now having to use all the money that I had and then having to get money from like borrow money in order for me to like buy certain things that I needed that I could not do without that nobody else could provide for me at the time. I don't want to talk about that. It upsets me very much and I'm not like over it yet. But Vera and I were talking about how like how do you even get into that kind of a situation when you've got like so many people around you and that's kind of like the rude awakening when you realize that just because you've got a hundred people around you it doesn't mean that all hundred people are actually there for you and they um with you you know 
um, there are certain roles that people play in our lives. And I think um, I even wrote a word, um, Facebook status. My name on Facebook is Tarya Menisa and um, Menisa with an H. And when I posted the status, I was basically talking about the three kinds of friends that we are all exposed to in life. And there's just three kinds of friends only. Okay, and the first group would be your confidants, and these are your day ones, these are your ride or dies, okay? These are the people that will bail you out of jail and not tell anybody about it because they just want to protect your in integrity, okay? Like, so they will be there for you no matter what. They don't uh, switch up, they don't grow weary, they don't, um, they don't turn on you. These are your confidants, and you're very lucky if you've got like two or three of those in life. I'm very lucky to have met um, some people that I can gladly say are my confidants and have been my confidants for years on end in my life. But there's also another group of people called the constituents and then the comrades. Those are the three categories. So there's the confidants, there's the constituents, and then there's the comrades. Okay. So with the constituents, they are very tricky because you can easily assume that these people are for you, but they're not really for you. They are for what you are for. So those people will be in your life as long as that there's something that they can gain if you guys share the same cause. So, for instance, if you guys have the same goals. I had a constituent, actually. Um, a person that I considered one of my closest or best friends, rather. And we were in school together and we were class together. And I think the only reason that that friendship lasted as long as it lasted was because we were studying together, um, sharing resources. Um, she was struggling most of the time. I was not. Um, there would be things that she would need from me when we're still going through the whole varsity thing, the whole, you know, school thing. And, and I think it benefited her a lot to actually be in my life at the time because she was benefiting from me. And so there came a point where we had now both reached the common goal or she had reached the common goal before I did. And then there was no need for that friendship anymore. And that's unfortunately something that happens in real life. Like some people are there in your life. Um, for as long as they can benefit something from you, for as long as you guys are, s are serving the same cause. For instance, if you guys are um, playing netball together and this friend of yours isn't that much of a good player in netball and you're like, I don't know, I've never played sports, I've never played netball, the only thing I know how to do is swim, I can't, I don't have balance, I'm a very clumsy child i fall and i break my bones all the time so i've never done things like netball and stuff i was terrible at it not that i've never done it we were forced to do those things at school but i was terrible at those things so i've never been in the a team or whatever teams they call them i was never interested even so i was always just like an a student didn't care much for the sports so with that being said um the a the a student of the netball team or the a team i don't know what what it's called no offense by the way but um let's say you are the a the 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 best player in the netball team and this friend of yours wants to be the best player but they're the second best player or they're the third best player and they've got a lot to learn from you or they've got a lot to benefit from being your close friends you guys are serving the the same purpose you guys are playing towards playing for the nationals or whatever so that person will stick around as long as they benefit that and as long as you can get them to where they need to get and then after that, when the purpose has been served, then there's no need for that friendship anymore. And a lot of times we tend to confuse our constituents for our confidants and it creates unrealistic expectations and it creates skewed lines. And then that's how you get hurt in friendships, okay? And then that third category is the comrades. These people are also not your friends. Comrades are people that are in your life because you guys are against the same thing. So you guys again share a common purpose but this time it's because you guys are against the same thing. So for instance, your comrades would be a person that is as passionate as you are about homophobia. Okay, so if you're a very homophobic person, um, you guys would be great friends because they are also a very homophobic person and you guys have the same purpose, which is to create as much havoc or chaos around homophobe around um homosexual people as you possibly can and then you guys have served the same purpose and then the friendship ends okay or just never mind homophobia maybe heterosexual couples whatever the case may be okay but you guys have got a common purpose i'm just using loose examples so please don't misquote me i did not say i'm homophobic i did not say i am against heterosexuals i didn't say anything along those lines i'm just making examples of 
the whole common purpose thing, having a common enemy or just not liking Matari. You guys would be friends not because you hate, not because you guys would be friends, not because you guys have got anything in common. The only thing in common that you have is the fact that you dislike me and you guys would then be best of friends until you accomplish whatever it is that you wanted to accomplish in terms of destroying my life, God forbid. And then after that, then there's no purpose for the friendship anymore. So that is the 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 comrades um category of friendship. Okay, so yeah, that this is now something that I wanted to talk about. So I wanted to talk about how um you know I was saying to Vera, you know, I've got like over a thousand five hundred contacts on my phone. There was a time and I was really down and out at this time and I was just like really just going through the most and I was like to her, I literally have like over one thousand five hundred contacts on my phone. Like I don't even know how I know this many people. And I have like personal relationships with like pretty much almost all those people. And some of them are like relationships that I mean, they're my clients and I do business with them or whatever. And with the really the people that I considered my friends in, 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 in those contexts, it was weird for me when I said to Vera, oh, no, this is happening. This, this is I don't know who to ask or I don't know, like who could give me direction in this situation and Vera was like to me have you tried so and so have you tried so and so and she kept giving me a list of all the names of the people that I'm constantly like surrounded by all the, the people that I'm constantly telling her about and how amazing they are and this that and the other and it was weird for me that I couldn't even go to those people and say anything to those people because it was at that moment where I realized that I don't even feel comfortable telling you about my problem do you know what I mean like it's it's that type of a situation. Whereas I'd be comfortable to say to those people, let's go rock, guys. Let's go and groove. And, you know, you go to groove and they spend 15K and you spend 15K and you guys are having the best time of your life. But here is a weird moment in your life where you need a friend and you can't even call those people because you don't even, in your heart of hearts, you know that this person is not going to pull through for you. And it's just kind of like, it kind of hurts, right? Because it's like, okay, so what is the point and what is the purpose of this relationship? So there's nothing wrong with having like allies and different categories of people in your life as long as you know where these people stand, as long as you know where you stand with these people. I think one thing that disappoints us the most is when we expect things from people because we have over-exaggerated our, our place in that person's life. You think that you're somebody's best friend. You think that somebody would cross the oceans for you when that person wouldn't even jump over paddles you think that just because you would do something for a person they would do the same thing for you and unfortunately that's not how life works right and we were also talking about relationships in terms of how you will date a person who for instance can empower you and you'll ask that person can you please give me 500 rand i need to pay for my registration for my for my for my for my exams for for my school and this person will dare us tell you that they do not have 500 rand and then the next thing you are posting lingerie pictures on sheen okay and you're like yo guys i need somebody to empty my cart and that cart is like on 4k this has happened to me i kid you not where i'm like yo please can i have money for registration for this that and the other and it's like 500 rand and and then i'm like yo i post a random status and i'll be like yo um my sheen my sheen cards is like so full i can't stop buying lingerie blah, 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 but i need to empty my cards and my cards is like on 4k and somebody that same person will dead ass in that same space of time give you the 4k for you to empty your sheen cards but they couldn't give you the money to assist you with something that could empower you do you see what i mean like this is because this is gonna benefit them if you're gonna get 4k to empty your sheen card so that you can buy that lingerie chances are you're gonna take sexy pictures and they're gonna ask you to send them those pictures because i can i'm the one that paid for that lingerie so show me do you know what i mean like you're not obligated to do it but chances are you might even do it because next time you post about that again that person might again say okay i'm gonna give you money again to do that do you understand what i'm talking about guys i'm talking about priorities that people have like people have got different intentions all the time and you need to know your place in that person's life and you need to know their place in your life in order for you not to have unrealistic expectations and expect them to pull through for you in certain instances and then when they don't do that now you crumble and you fall because oh my gosh how could this person do this because i depended on them and i trusted them to help to help you people will help you most of the time when they feel like they're going to benefit something from it do you know what i mean the same friend that i could have asked Kuti, can you please um 
assist me with printing a hundred papers for me at your office since you've got a printer and my printer broke that person may not see the need to do that for me at that time it's just printing papers really honestly you've got the papers just please print the papers for me and they may feel like that is a tedious thing for them to do only to be the same person that will want to come back a year and a half later to ask me for free quick legal advice and i'm just like what's quick legal advice do you know what i mean so these are some of the dynamics that we experience in our friendships and in our relationships generally even with family guys about relationships that we have in our lives generally like how we just need to be more cognizant of the fact that not everybody is for you and just because you've got a good heart it doesn't mean that everybody's on the same page as you are and so when vera and i were having this conversation you know it was a very short brief conversation because i have not been in the mood to have a conversation with anybody i think this is the longest that i've actually spoken like said anything that comes out of my mouth like an actual conversation even though i'm talking to myself well, i'm not talking to myself because i'm talking to you but i think this is the longest conversation that i've had in a couple of days where i actually open my mouth and i say stuff like i've been very quiet in the last two weeks especially like i've just been very emotional very overwhelmed very distressed and just really quiet and i'll have a conversation with the person here and there i'll respond to a message here and there i've got like over 100 whatsapp messages that i haven't read and i have no intention to read them whatsoever like i have no interest in having a conversation with a lot of people at the moment not because i'm angry at anybody because i kind of need to be with myself because sometimes you just don't have the capacity and conversations require you to have like an energy exchange and sometimes you don't even have the energy and you can't pour into somebody if you yourself are running low so it's more of a i can't pour from an empty cup type of situation it's more of a i really need to focus on myself i need to focus on what's happening in front of me and right now that is these exams because these are the biggest exams of my profession my entire life and it's a lot of work and i'm stressed and i'm overwhelmed and i'm not sure if i've studied enough i'm not sure if i know anything yet you know and i don't even have any time i'm writing really really soon like i don't i'm writing as in yesterday you know and while i'm sitting here i was i was chatting with her again and she's busy like stop writing statuses and, and study you know because every day she does not tire she's constantly telling me study 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 like every single time we have a chat she's just like so how's the studying going are you studying study 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 and you know that's a person that's constantly in my ear about just study do better you know what i mean like she's she's she's, she's that and i appreciate that actually about her because even in other aspects of my life she's that friend okay so how's it coming with the business how's it coming with this that and the other but those are kind of those are the relationships that i'm talking about those are the relationships where a person is pouring into you and you can then freely also pour into them because they're pouring into you you know and she's one of the few people that i'm actually conversing with because i don't feel like talking to a lot of other people they are my other um people that i'm talking to but i'm just saying that at this point in time it's more of my cup is running a bit low and i cannot pour from an empty cup so i kind of just really need to focus on sustaining myself until this passes so yes there'll be people that you will show up for them um you guys will have the best of times you have friends you will see you guys uh rock together all the time you do everything together and then something will happen like a person will pass away in your family and that's when you would think that your friend will pull through for you the most only to find that that person is not there and it's about dialogue and to be having friendships where it's all about good times now we need friends that are going to help us peel potatoes and cut vegetables and stuff like that when shit hits the fan at the family house you know a person that's going to be there to help the other gens slaughter the cow or whatever the case may be do you know what i mean like we don't only need friends that are for vibes and like good times only and so um yeah the moral of this whole thing was to i think it's very important it was important for me to share that little piece of information to you know, just like say guys yo i you can tell like like having boundaries and knowing your place in people's lives so that you don't over exaggerate your place in people's lives because that's how you get hurt whether in a relationship whether in a friendship whether with your family members like don't give yourself a position that hasn't a position that hasn't been given to you you know don't do something because when you assume that you are the most important person in that person's life because chances are you're not you know know the people that are in your life and know the place that you play and the role that you play in their lives and the role that they play in your life that way you will avoid disappointment and this is something i really had a rude awakening with but i'm really glad that i did have that awakening because now i know better now i know not to feel bad when somebody asks me for a favor and i and i can just say no 
angfuni, with no explanations, with no feeling bad. Because sometimes I say yes, even when I want to say no, because I feel guilty about not helping, excuse me, the next person. I feel guilty about why can't I help them because I know that I can. But sometimes angfuni, like I don't want to. And there's nothing wrong with ungafuni, right? And nobody owes you anything. Also, so then once you also realize that, you'll not be bitter. I can't be mad at anybody for not being able to assist me or not being willing to assist me when I was going through the most in the last couple of months that I've been going through the most in terms of just like working towards this profession. You know, it's not their place. It's not something that they're obligated to do. Those that helped, I appreciate them more than I can ever express in words. And one day I'll be able to express my gratitude towards them, you know, um, by God's grace and favor, I will be able to one day repay them um and repay them and, and 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 be there and show up for them the way that they showed up for me and those that couldn't or didn't want to or you know i cannot be mad at those people because nobody is actually obligated to do anything for you because nobody owes you anything and yeah i find a lot of people's friendships end because people feel like people owe them stuff and then you tend to get mad and you tend to become entitled and then you get upset when you don't get what you want from people because you're so entitled and you honestly do not have the right because it's not your stuff it's not it's not it's not something that they have to do it's something that they should want to do it's something that should come from their hearts that's generally how it it's supposed to be whenever you help anybody and that's why the bible says good see if you give a person with your right hand let your left hand not see what your right hand is doing or if you give them with your right if you kill them with your left, let the right not see. But something about the other hand not seeing. Because you do things for people from the bottom of your heart. And knowing that Christ is watching. Not because you want other people to see. But you've helped other people. Do you know what I mean? So if you're going to feed me and then talk about it. Then I'd rather you don't feed me at all. You know? Because that's like, you weren't doing it for the right reasons. You're doing it for yourself. And so, yeah, guys, you must remember there's confidants, there's constituents, and there is comrades. And if you want to, like, learn more about it, you can read about it. Or you can just, like, go on YouTube and check out, like, T.D. Jakes. Um, he has a whole sermon on this. And it was, like, one sermon that was, like, really life-altering for me. Because there's a lot of things that that man says that I can relate to. That always make me feel better, though. Because every single time Bishop T.G. T.D. Jake says something I've always somehow received healing from his sermons and he'll just say something and it will make sense and will be like ah that is my problem and you know sometimes you tend to think that you're the only person that's going through something only to find that other people have also experienced it so yeah uh I need to get back to studying this was my study break and this video is a bit long now but I hope this was like somewhat insightful to a certain extent and I did not bore you with this video um and yeah, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your post notifications. I'm going to be doing a story time and dropping a story time soon. I just need to finish with this PTPT PT summer exams. And that will be very soon. And I'll also be doing another challenge that's really exciting and really funny. Um, I need to get other people to participate because the last challenge humbled me. And ish, yo, this one must be better than the last one. Because wowza. There's no way I'm ever doing that again. Yeah, so guys, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos. I really appreciate you guys subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting. I appreciate it all. I'd also appreciate if you could actually drop your comments. So yeah, guys, um, that's all from me today. Uh, I'll be seeing you guys soon with more content. I love you guys all so much. Please, please, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, turn on your post notifications, and stay in tune for um, more content. Mm-hmm.